In this episode of the Inverted T HHO cell generator, we're going to go through the steps that I use to create the circular shims that will separate each neutral and charged plate inside the body of the T fitting. So what we need to accomplish that task is we need a section of 3 inch pipe which I'm going to slice up. I need a piece of nice coarse sandpaper which I happen to have a good supply of. And this monster tie wrap happens to be the exact width that I want for my shims. As I said earlier, this would be so much easier with a band saw or a circular crosscut saw. With a band saw I could just put this up against the rip fence and zip off a whole bunch of them uh, at whatever thickness I wanted, but since I don't have that, what I do have hanging up here is a hacksaw. So I'm going to show you how I do it with a hacksaw. I've got a thin sharpie that I'm going to use to mark my PVC. I'll move that out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my PVC pipe. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have a nice straight and flat edge on one side of the PVC. All right. I want I want the plates to lay flat against my shims so I need to make sure that this is a very even surface. Now a lot of the a lot of the gaps that might be formed if it's uneven will be filled in with the 3M adhesive but I still want to get this as close to perfect as I can before I, I start making my cuts into the PVC. So I'll just take my sandpaper, hold it against a flat surface and go in a circular motion and what I'm looking for is a sand hatch pattern on the edge of the PVC pipe so that I know I've gotten all the way down. And I notice there's a few spots where I'm not getting this pattern, so I still need to keep going until I... Alright, so now I can see where I'm making my hatch pattern with the, sand, the coarse sandpaper on the edge of the 3-inch uh, uh, three three pipe all the way around. So I know I have a fairly even surface all the way around this. Take my knife and I'll just clean up the edges a little bit. Like so. And I'm going to draw a line now. Now to get a neat, nice even line, I use this tie wrap. And I'm just going to wrap it around the pipe and I'm going to pinch it on one side to hold it tight against the pipe and I'm going to push it down against my flat surface. So now I have a guide that I can draw my line with and my Sharpie. I can't go all the way around because I have it pinched on one side. So all I do is just take the piece of pipe and spin it around and complete the line. And there's my line that I'm going to cut for the shim that I'm going to create. You might think that this is a very thick spacing between plates that this shim is going to create and you're absolutely right about that. It is 5 sixteenths of an inch. Um, it seems like a lot but w we need to maintain even spacing all the way down the stack and you're going to see in the end why we needed that extra, s extra gap when we get to the charged electrodes. Okay, I'm over at my vise now, and I've had to change the camera angle because I'm right-handed. If I was left-handed, I could shoot it from the other side, but anyway. I've got the vise jaws open just far enough so that the uh, pipe will sit in there without spinning around and is very 
held very stable by the size of the opening. If I was to open this up one more turn, the pipe would fall right down through the jaws. So that's that's how close I have, uh, how close I am to this just falling through. Now here's the trick to doing it with a hacksaw. I'm going to use my thumb as a guide on the top of the PVC and I'm just going to start my cut and I'm going to make my cut just so that I see a part of the line that I've drawn exposed. I want to make sure that I'm cutting straight and smooth. Keep all of the shavings off of it. And as soon as I break through the PVC, I'm no longer going to use the blade to cut on the far side of the pipe. I'm only going to apply pressure on the blade to cut through the near side of the pipe, uh, near, near side of the pipe, and I'm going to spin the pipe around to constantly meet this line so that I can guide the blade through and guide it very close to the edge of this line all the way around. If I was to just saw all the way through, and cut the pipe and cut a, sh cut a slice off this way, I can't see the far end of the blade down here as it's trying to pass through the pipe and it has a tendency to wander. So the trick is get through the pipe first and then only use the blade to cut the part of the line that you can see. Again, I'll brush away the shavings to make sure my blade is straight, making the initial cut. And that looks pretty good. And already, I can feel the blade starting to go through the pipe, so I'm in, I'm in good shape here. Right now I'm going to start spinning the pipe around a little bit. And this gets easier as you get further down through the pipe. But my blade is only cutting through the part of the line that I can see. I'm, I'm no longer cutting through the far end of the pipe. And I know where the far end is just by rocking the blade back and forth. So I back it up a little bit and I start cutting. And this allows me to guide the blade along the edge of the line all the way around. This, of course, is the poor man's way of doing it. If I had a bandsaw, I would be showing you that instead. Okay, we're almost all the way around here. And I can see I'm um, coming right up to where the original cut started, which is good. It's a good sign. And there we have it. There's my shim. All I need to do is clean it up, sand this edge again on the flat surface to make the, the surface smooth and perhaps uh, just make sure it measure the thickness to make sure that I've got the exact same thickness on all my pieces. <coughs> 